going on? How you guys doing? This is Solar Brave, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and welcome to the dark side of the room. Alright, um, whole bunch of stuff went down. Gotta love, gotta love, gotta love the last few days. And of course, my phone is just going crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, it's one of them things where a whole bunch of stuff is going wacky and weird and all that jazz. But, you know, it's a thing. It's one of the things that happens when you're, um, what is the term I'm looking for? You know, you're, you're doing your thing, you're trying to make sure that stuff goes well, um, yeah, and all in all, but what I gotta do here is, of course, ah, uh, there we are, um, boo -boo, boo -boo -boo. just making absolutely sure, nope, 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 nope. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, just making absolutely sure that everything is coming through the way that it's supposed to be coming through right now. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, so many different things. So many different things. So many. Ah, uh, so, 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 so many different ways of um, making sure that oh, uh, we get everything going through. My stuff right now is going a little weird um not picking up everything i need to pick up right now so what i'm doing is yeah i couldn't um yeah there we go that's number three yeah so yeah on one level i'm kind of coming through where yeah well anyway Y'all know how live streams go. So anyway, what is going on? Whoa! Yep, I know. I know, I know, I know. How's that, Mr. Khan? Khan! Khan! So yeah, and again, um, coming through right now, trying to make sure that everything is set up and working the way that, uh, oh, uh, trying to figure out a way to make sure that everything is working but it looks like my title page as it stands right now is being a little wonky like it's be it's seriously being a little wonky and with wonky i mean my normal thing that i have to pull up right now is um is not give me just a second here oh so much disarray there we are all right yeah one of the things that I'm trying to, um, ah, there we are. Display capture. Yeah, that works. Create new. Nope, that's not the one I want. Yeah, for some reason, my OBS is being a little weird right now. And it's not letting me pull up certain things. So, I'm having a hard time telling folks where to get a hold of us. But I've got a little bit of a fix for that you know because much like apple i try and be in places where there's you know what's the term i'm looking for uh where i have an app for that and where i'm sitting is um yeah i'm having a real hard time with a lot of the stuff we've been doing a whole lot of new stuff with the studio as it stands right now and um, the things that we're doing with this studio as it stands right now is um, we got a lot of stuff going. So there we go. Let me just um, make a couple of really quick adjustments here, real quick, making it a thing. Um, getting that out of there. Yeah, getting that out of there real quick because what I'm doing here is I forgot to fix the thing where I let you guys know um, a couple of really fun stuff you know so for now boom we're gonna do that and now we're gonna make this just a tad here good yeah we're just gonna do a little bit of a white window here and now we're just gonna move this over here to that. All right, there we go. Now I can turn the music back up and say, hey guys, what's up? I'm so sorry that I'm so late. Like I said, the 
the studio right now. Well, let's face it, we're on CP time, all right? <laughs> um, yeah, 17 minutes. Hey, I'm doing, I'm doing all right as far as all that stuff goes. And I want to say thank you guys for showing up, as always. And, of course, let's see who we got going today. We got, oh, that is very cool. We got quite a few people in. It's good to have you back, Impossible. And, well, how can I put that? We got a lot of stuff to talk about today, including types of gamers, because it's that time of year where we always do one of those things. Well, everybody online right now is doing that whole, hey, what kind of gamer are you? What kind of thing is this? And I'm like, how can I be different? How can I be different? I don't want to be contrarian, but I'm just trying to make stuff relevant. And I had to think about a couple of things. But before I get into that, I'm going to get in to a little bit of business. So if you guys are watching, hey, we're up to seven viewers already. I'm loving you guys. Um, just pull up your keyboards and pull up all your social media stuff and type in the good old term of back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-a-g-d-e-c-k at gmail.com transfer or should i say subscribe to us and all that jazz on our youtube site um where we're going to be putting up excerpts and stuff and there's a lot of stuff our stuff is all over the place i can tell y'all what whatsoever and of course um hit us up Ooh, <laughs> yeah and of course you can hit us up on twitter at back in the deck leave us messages start good faith discussions we'll talk about that a little bit and of course if you are on that wretched hive of scum and villainy like a lot of us are known as the facebook you can join deckers on the book now if you guys don't like watching these shows you don't have time to watch them live that's perfectly fine it's perfectly okay that is one of those things that we're doing um again once you have us up on our social medias that is a super easy thing for you to do all you have to do is head right back over to soundcloud.com that's right if you head on over to the soundcloud you can listen to our shows and do all the stuff that listening to our shows entails and um you know just as our gift it's like hey what's up you know what you can download that stuff and keep it for free forever um if you do that um, um if you guys want to help us out in a very very personal matter like uh our queen over here uh shannon Boomlay, we've got um a patreon you guys can sign up at as little as a dollar a month and when i say queen let me show you some of these level here real quick that's right our queens are at twenty dollars a month and our kings are at fifty because this is the 21st century and we're still working on that quality cap. so um you know come on up sign up become a queen at twenty dollars a month and of course i gotta give a major shout out to our first ace jennifer pro that's right we're over here at patreon.com slash bat b-i-p underscore p and of course you know follow us on the instagram and at twitter and all those other places so now that we got all that stuff down i can turn this music down Ah, I know y'all are always on me about that. So yeah, I'm turning it down so that we can talk. I got my coffee. I got my smokes. Um, we can talk about a lot of things. And for those of you guys that are under 21 and watching us, I do it. Y'all shouldn't start. Believe me. Um, the amount of money and stuff that I could save if I were able to go into rehab would be great. Anyway, we have got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Um, it has been a week and, you know, with one of the things that are going on during this whole week has been, of course, more of the revamping of the website and all that stuff. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about today, um, or should I say talk with you guys about today and bring your friends because this is going to be a big one. Um, I had an interesting experience. Okay. Um, had an interesting experience in teaching again now as you guys know um we are featuring um at least for 2020 a game called marvel crisis protocol from atomic mass games and why because this game is awesome and it's everything i wanted from previous games we're going to be focusing on quite a few you know of course 
I, as a tabletop gamer, and I have to make that clear, tabletop gaming, um, we're really big on things like um, miniatures games, role-playing games, board games, things like that. And with that, um, I like to have one of each. Okay, I like to have one of each to keep my stuff, um, to keep myself relatively sane, as you will. And Atomic Mass Games um, came out with a game, as you guys know, called Crisis Protocol. That's right, uh, Crisis Protocol. It's a tabletop miniatures game featuring Marvel superheroes. You get a whole lot of people going pew pew, pew pew. And it's everything that I wanted from a tabletop miniatures game with superheroes so i'm all about that jazz um and i was teaching someone how to play and an interesting thing occurred to me um as you guys know we deal with a lot of new gamers okay and when i say new gamers i mean people who are new to the hobbies all aspects of the hobby and um people that are new to various games again at the 20 dollars tier um, on the Patreon, pay, pay, Patreon, you can, you know, hit me up personally and I will either do a Zoom session with you or come see you personally, depending on your geography, um, to teach you, um, a game of your choice. And one of the games that has been invoked because of, um, Patreon has been, um, Unicorns. Yeah. Angry Unicorns. So we're going to get to that. We'll probably cover it in a couple of weeks. Um, it's winter, man is low. Anyway, um, and I was teaching someone Marvel Crisis Protocol, and that was a real big one, okay? Because with uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol, it is a tabletop miniatures game, which means it's got a lot of moving parts as far as, um, as far as, um, learning the rules go. Like, it's not as simple as... A monopoly type game where you just roll the dice move a piece and do what happens okay um and one of the things i want to talk to you guys about is the fact that long gone are those days we all grew up in the continental united states with the good old milton bradley games y'all know the ones i'm talking about we're talking sorry um candy land shoots and ladders um what else scrabble and of course the king of all of those games monopoly okay um these are games that are staples in continental united states culture regardless of where you come from everybody's got a monopoly game and monopoly hasn't really changed um since it came out in like the 1920s 1930s um but there are a lot of other games out there loads of other games so many games out there that brick and mortar stores are coming up all over the place all over the place there are brick and mortar stores but to people that are new to this world okay they hear game and they tend to think the old-fashioned milton bradley stuff which why not you know i hear rock and roll or most people hear rock and roll and they think of like the rolling stones kiss or if they grew up hating rock and roll, they probably think of some obnoxious metal band from Scandinavia, um, and all of and all of the rigmarole that comes with that. So today I'm going to talk about a few things. Okay, I want to talk about learning new games and the what is the term I'm looking for? Um, some of the baggage that comes along with that. And why do I want to talk about it? Of course not to mock. I want to put it out there so that we can address it and maybe find some ways through it. That is a really big thing. Um, major, major shout outs to some of my folks out there. Now, I have been beating my head against how to teach games for coming up on 20 years. This is no lie. Um, from teaching people how to play Go, and teaching people how to play chess and Dungeons and Dragons and the Game of Thrones um, collectible card game from the early 2000s, the Lord of the Rings collectible card games, um, various role playing games and things like that. And there's been a lot of stuff that comes down. Now, I am not one of those teachers that says this is the way 
to play this game. You'll find that all over the place. A lot of people have a lot of theories on the way to do it. And I don't look at that as gospel, but I do look at a lot of the stuff they say and I'm like, that is great to integrate. That is great to integrate. Um, guys like Matthew Coville is a fantastic teacher of an aspect of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, WebDM is another fantastic teacher of aspects of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, XP to level three, I, those guys, I love um, their aspects. I mean, I bring up those three in particular because Matt Coville has very much a style that's based on his point of view, which is as a professional writer and a longtime gamer. WebDM, they're old school. And I mean like Dungeons and Dragons first edition back in 1974. And they have been in the trenches um, with specifically Dungeons and Dragons for over 40 years now, about 46 years, um, as a matter of fact. And of course, of course, of course, of course, you know, XP to level three, these guys are millennials. I mean, they're barely 30 and they really got in at fourth edition and they, um, you know, fourth edition, fifth edition, and they are amazing. You know, um, and of course, when I say XP to level three, of course, I'm incorporating Runesmith into that because, you know, it's kind of like saying Breaking Bad and then incorporating Better Call Saul. It's a different thing. Um, you know, and of course, one of my favorite guys out there, massive, massive shout out to Seth Sarkowski. Um, he, he is a longtime role player like me, about my age, and he approaches stuff from a different angle. Um, but what I want to do, what I want to do with you guys today is approach gaming from a meta meta standpoint i'm talking real big picture stuff okay because um again being the sorcerer i see the magic and the strings of how reality is weaved together and i want to address how understanding some of these concepts when it comes to playing games um can actually help us navigate other things okay now what types of games are there Okay, we've got lots of different types of games. All right, um, we've got things like um, um, role-playing games. Of course, you know the emperor of role-playing games, as we all know, as we all know, as we've all understood, is Dungeons and Dragons. You know, um, you know we've got. D, D, which is like the top the second most popular rpg globally is call of cthulhu which i find fun because um well how can i put this officially um mm, how am i gonna say this they, oh yeah that's right these guys are on the opposite ends the absolute opposite ends of um the types of games that people play okay like literally on the opposite end dungeons and dragons is all about finding the trouble getting into the adventure and having a whole bunch of fun beating the monster and taking their stuff okay it, it's made to make you feel empowered and special and great where call of cthulhu is on the opposite end you are small you are small you are insignificant and there are things out there bigger than anything that you can conceptualize and they don't even notice you. But you may be wiped away from existence if one of them has restless leg syndrome as they sleep through deep time. You know what I mean? Um, and that is where you're in an adventure, but you don't have any special powers, no special skills. You are a guy or a girl or a man or a woman in an adventure where you've got cultists that would sooner skin you than to say hello um you know monsters that even understanding what they are will drive you completely insane and of course all of the authorities are amazingly inept when you need them and super competent when they're after you almost like being black no I'm kidding 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 um but yeah so those are the two biggest board um rpgs but then, of course, we've got um, um, card games like um, Magic the Gathering. And Magic the Gathering is card flipping, of course. Um, I say Magic the Gathering because it was the first and it's still the biggest out there. 
but you know i'm not no i'm not throwing shade on pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, and you know there are generations of people that love that stuff for good reason they are awesome games they are fun but we also have a new renaissance of board games okay um and with our board game renaissance we've got loads 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 of board games and i mean excuse me board games all the way across the board i mean i'm here at fantasy flight games and we've got you know star wars final hour game of thrones arkham horror lord of the rings descent eldritch horror horror of course um all the Catan games that were brought over um from germany i mean we have got so much so many options when it comes to playing a board game and um of course we've got tabletop miniatures games now currently i'm on marvel crisis protocol that is where i am but of course um the main and i mean that the main tabletop war game main tabletop war game um where as soon as you say tabletop miniatures game um the number one thing that comes to the mind of most gamers is warhammer 40k um they were kind of the first i mean chainmail was up there and of course historical reenactment um but yeah these guys you know and we're gonna get into what i mean what these games consist of and um and what their differences are and i really wanna really 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 want to focus on learning curve but like with tabletop miniatures games, Marvel Crisis Protocol is one of them, 40k is the king, there's War Machine from Privateer Press, there was one for Starship Troopers a long time ago, Joseph McCullough puts out one of my favorites um, called Frostgrave, um, along with the Rangers of Shadow Deep, which runs on a similar engine. Um, we've also got, you know, um, more um, Battlefleet Gothic and Morheim and... <laughs> um you know just loads and loads of make your toys put them on a table make them fight and go pew 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 shroom shroom pew pew and yeah that's right star wars has like four okay star wars has like four tabletop miniatures games um and finally we have party games okay now right now there is one game okay and when i say party games um we always knew that there was a difference between charades and monopoly um we also know that there are differences between pictionary and scrabble okay um these are games that you literally play at parties they have a very low learning curve and they're easy to do when you're drunk okay thus the whole party game and right now one of the biggest and most popular party games that there are out there and i'm not going to throw too much shade on it it's not really my taste but one of the biggest party games that are out there right now cards against humanity what what <laughs> um ironically i prefer it's its parent game apples to apples but that's just me um i am a little you know mr rogers type um, wholesome regardless of the dark stuff that I know and see but um, between all of these things um, there are different types of games and with those different types of games each one comes with the thing that I talk about all the time and people online and in person are telling me you know I need to take a stronger stand okay time and place that is the number one thing none of these types of games are bad in and of themselves they just have their time they just have their place and they have their audience okay so when was it made for where was it made for who was it made for that's a big thing um cards against humanity is a big party game i prefer um the code name games like werewolf secret agent things like that um, but there are lots, and there are loads and loads and loads and loads of YouTube channels that have been reviewing them for a long time. Um, but yeah, I want to talk about the principles behind each one, okay? And I know, 
I only got an hour to do it. So <laughs> let's let's make this thing a thing. Now, when it comes to RPGs, okay, RPGs um, or tabletop role playing games tend to have a high learning curve, um, and that makes these things a little weird. But let's talk. Let's before we get into the learning curve, I want to talk about the who's, the types of gamers that there are, or the types of people that learn to play games, rather. They tend to come in four flavors. And Seth Sarkowski, just last week, did a great video on his YouTube channel. Uh, let me pull this up here real quick. Um, he did a great video on his YouTube channel addressing the types of players that there are and how compatible they are. And he goes deep. And I kind of want to expand on that from the premise of learning, okay? Um, because a lot of people, um, okay, I'm guilty of this hardcore, okay? I really am. Um, I have a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, yeah, Hello, a Ernest. whole lot, a lot um, um, of enthusiasm when I love a game. I fall in love with a game and I'm like, dude, I want to teach it to as many people as possible to, um, to what is the word? Oh, yeah. Um, I want to teach it to as many people as possible so that I can, um, I can maximize my opportunities for people to play with. Um, but the video here is, um, player compatibility when not to play with someone and RPG philosophy and this guy again um, y'all can make as much fun of me as you want but this guy's writing is top-notch and he is really really great on that um seriously it's um uh, I'm, I'm seriously seriously in love with the way that he does um, his stuff and he talks about different types of gamers at the table in regards to role-playing games so I want to talk about the different types of gamers when it comes to learning. And thanks, Empty Flow. I um I had to come over here to YouTube after Copa or Copta or the new thing that came down, and because I don't know where I fit. You know how that is. I, I just I don't know. I don't know if I'm family friendly or too family friendly or not family friendly a lot. And I'm not making a whole lot of money from doing this, but to continuously jump from one foot to the other is making it hard to make a living so i came back over here to twitch and doing the thing but we'll, um i'm gonna be posting um highlights and stuff on youtube so thanks for coming by man and final d is awesome um spread the word bring some more friends anyway back to the discussion um when dealing with teaching people a game there is an interesting dynamic. Now, this can actually be applied to video games as well. Um, when you're trying to teach someone how to play a game, it's very difficult to not be that guy. And by that guy, I mean this big, booming, um, intimidating presence. Um, Yahtzee Khrushchev from Zero Punctuation talked about this 10 years ago when he was reviewing Rock Band. And it's like, it's a party game. You want people at a party to play it and have fun and do all that stuff. But you've pretty much got to beat the game to unlock all the songs. And then by the time you've done that, you are the best player in the room, <laughs> especially when it comes to new games. So people get discouraged. I used to, um, when I was working at a game store, I played with a lot of people who only thought about tournaments and they taught in a very Eastern style, which is kick the crap out of you until you figure out how not to get the crap kicked out of you. And I'm like, that's like a 10 year old sparring with Chuck Norris. It's not cool. <laughs> um, it really discourages people from playing. However, there are people and the four major categories that I want to talk about when it comes to um, people learning games are kind of an expansion on what Seth Sarkowski said, but I'm dealing mainly with player archetypes in beginning of learning any type of game, okay, any type. Um, the first type I want to talk, talk about um, are the competitive ones, okay? 
Um, <clears throat> it's very important to understand the learning curve of the type of game that you're getting into. And competitive players have a tendency, and I, I just don't mean, I don't just mean, um, tournament type thinkers, but I mean players who look at playing a game with the idea of, well, what's the point of playing if I'm not trying to win? Which is a fair question. It's a very, very fair question. But when teaching a game or learning a game from someone who knows how to understand, there is a very, very brain tickly level of a power dynamic that is that is expressed. There is the teacher student dynamic. And a lot of players come through this idea with the teacher student dynamic that when it comes to a game, if you can beat the teacher, you are a master. And a lot of other people just don't like losing. And when it comes to certain games, games, um, the higher the learning curve, the more likely you are to lose your first game. Now, when people are teaching games, if they are competitive teachers, the competitive teachers tend to um, give very few overlying rules. Like, they, they, they don't focus a whole lot on game mechanics and making sure that their opponent understands what's going. They want to play the game, okay? And this is um, one of the things I've been fighting gamers about for over 20 years, which is um, teaching is a skill. <laughs> it is a skill that one must develop. And for a lot of people, a lot of people, um, like if you guys have significant others that you want to teach games to, it's very important to learn how to teach because we have this tendency of believing that our enthusiasm is universal instead of focusing on making our enthusiasm contagious okay there is a difference between the two um someone who wants to win more than they want to learn will have a very very frustrating time learning a new game that has a medium to high learning curve and in trying to teach them something you really have to keep that in mind before making the offer and more and before beginning the process now there is another type of player and this is half of my inner circle gaming group that are socially motivated seth talks about this on his video and i love him for it and these are people that really don't put playing the game even winning the game at the top of their priority list the game itself is a delivery system for the social interaction. Okay, for you guys out there um, that play a lot of RPGs, we all know these people. They, they have been at our tables at one point or another where they don't read the RPG book or if you're playing tabletop miniatures game, they don't read the rules. They're just happy to be around. They're, they're happy to be around and they want to talk about stuff outside of the game. They want to drink. Um, they want to, you know, show people stuff on their phone. It's the experience of the game is just an excuse um, for a party. It's literally the delivery system to the social interaction. Now, party games are perfect for these people. Games like Cards Against Humanity games like all of the cards against humanity clones um there's one that's done by the guys that do um um happiness and cyanide that i like a little more you know apples to apples things like that um <clears throat> um exactly we've got uh <laughs> we got one of our people in the chat going yeah first skill of teaching it is um you have to meet players where they are not where you want them to be that's exactly it and um and understanding the type of players they might be is the first step to understanding where they are. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum from the social gamer is game above all. You know, these are the people that just want to play. They don't want to talk about politics. They don't care about the weather. They couldn't care any less. If they tried, they could not care any less about how your week went they showed up they want to play D, D. they showed up they want to play warhammer they showed up they want to play magic the gathering 
it, it doesn't matter what else is going on in your life. Um, a huge amount of escapists fall into this category because a lot of people play games to not think about the stuff that most people want to talk about. <laughs> it's like, I ain't with that. <laughs> I ain't with that. Oh, thanks, Empty Flow. You, you are awesome. Um, yeah, seriously, they don't, they don't want to think about that stuff. They just want to play. So they might want to socialize after the playing is done, but they showed up to play. That's what they want to do. And that is where they're at. And of course, there is the category that I'd like to think that I fit in. The people that are just happy playing the game. They don't care if they win or lose. Um, playing the game is enough. And they have fun playing the game. I'm big on superhero miniature games because I love comic books. I love uh, I love what my friend's wife called pew pew, pew pew, roosh roosh, pew pew. So when I'm playing, say, Star Trek Attack Wing, <clears throat> you know, I'm on the Defiant. I'm sitting right next to Cisco going, all right, Captain, what are we going to do? Blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm having fun with the whole thing. Um, I recently played a game where I got so dice screwed. Um, there was no chance I could win. It literally was, all right, all I need is anything but a three. Anything above three on a 20-sided die. Let's do this. And I rolled a two. Okay, so that guy's dead and all that stuff. And the person I was playing against was just on fire. Not on fire, on fire. I mean, their dice were just, you know, practically every hit was a critical hit. I got trounced by the dice and i was i was ecstatic because that's how games go sometimes you know i'm sure all of us have had the experience of playing monopoly and every there came a point in the game where every single time we rolled the dice we landed on somebody else's property whose rent we couldn't afford right you know um so yeah it's it's really important to take these archetypes these four main archetypes that I've discovered into account. Um, if, a per if a person approaches um, a tabletop RPG, for example, right? If they approach it in the mindset of a party game, they're not gonna get the mechanics. They are going to zone out so hard with the deluge of information and the lexicon that comes with it, okay? It's, it's huge, it's huge. I can easily say I actually had advantage on um, my long sword attack and then I decided to not use one of my spell slots for a smite, but to use my spell slot to cast sanctuary on the person that was dying so that the cleric could get over there and heal them without any of the other kobolds doing the thing. And then I ended up rolling a 17, but uh, the armor class was 16 and I get a plus four to hit. I can say all that stuff and all they hear is beep. You know, uh, that's all they hear. That's all they hear. That's all they see. And a lot of the times we approach new people in these gaming situations without understanding how far we've come. Okay. I, I used to liken it to my height. I am six foot four. Okay. I'm a six foot four, 200 pound dude. And I remember, and in a lot of ways, I still think like I was five foot two. All right. Like I was five foot two, my little butterball self running around, uh, sweaty and stinky and super high voice, you know, so I've, I've gotten taller. Um, and we tend to forget that being new means not having stuff that would be common sense to someone who wasn't new. Okay. So when approaching someone who has the cards against the humanity mindset of, I wanna play and have fun with my friends, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's very difficult to inundate them with a deluge, just the, the, this, this tsunami of new vocabulary, mathematics, if then statements. And what a lot of gamers do, and we are all guilty of it, teaching tactics before the rules of games are understood, i.e. here is how to win, and I'm not going to tell you why it works, okay? Um, now, a lot of players, um, tabletop minis, may, they're only one aspect 
of gaming. Okay? They really are. They're just the fight. That, that's the whole thing. It's just the fight. It's not the role playing. It's not the exploration. It's not the puzzle solving most of the time. Most of the time, it's just the fighting aspect of a tabletop RPG. Um, but the nuances and combinations can take a long time to discover, to understand, and don't get me started on that subject with card games. Oh my god, card games. Every single one of you guys out there that have played Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, uh, Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, Magic the Gathering, y'all know what I'm talking about. A new key phrase, every expansion, um, new combinations, old combinations, new factions, old factions. There is so much that goes into it that you don't notice, especially the longer you play. Because much like growing from 5'2 to 6'4, it happens by tiny little increments at a time. Tiny increments. All right? Just like with your job. With your job and your school. We all remember being in kindergarten and stressing over learning how to write a G in cursive. You know? Or maybe me. I don't know. Uh, most people had, had a problem with their multiplication tables when they got to four. Okay, um, doing your multiplications of four. We all had a problem with that. By the time you get to high school and you're taking algebra two, oh my God, you know, it's easy to say four times 25 equals 100. You know, you've, you've dealt with enough quarters by then. But to expect a second grader to understand that, it's just ludicrous, okay? And a lot of people don't like to think of themselves as children. But one of my favorite old writers, yes, a lot of his views are problematic, but there's a lot to learn beyond that stuff. Um, Robert A. Heinlein in Stranger in a Strange Land, he had his main character approach everything new as if he was a baby. He'd be like, I'm just an egg in this. I don't know what I'm doing. I haven't hatched. I haven't grown. I am but an egg in understanding. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing with not knowing. But that teacher-student um, dynamic, that this person has power over me in this, in this particular situation, may rub people the wrong way sur um, subconsciously. And there's nothing that you can do to stop that. But there are a couple of things that you can do to navigate around it. Understand that these three things... Um, there are three major places that these mindsets tend to go, just like they did with school or with most power dynamics. And that is acquiescence, competition, or discouragement. Now, we hope for acquiescence. We hope that the people that we teach or, or the people that we learn from, we hope that with that power dynamic, there is a trust there. A trust of, I'm teaching you how to play this game and I want you to be able to play this game to the best of your ability because I don't want a punching bag and I definitely don't want to be a punching bag <laughs> all right and I don't want people to feel like a punching bag because at the end of the game at the end of the day a game should be fun playing a game should be a pleasant experience right I mean am I crazy for thinking that I know I'm crazy but is that the thing that makes that so I, I, I don't think so um but competition, there was one guy I knew way back in the early 2000s, and um, I get this when I teach dance, when I teach performance, when I teach a lot of things of people have the idea that, yes, I'm teaching them, but if they can be better than me, then they have value to themselves. And that's not a bad mindset to have. It really isn't. However time that's a thing okay um take warhammer 40k for example now that game has a very bad reputation about competitive and mean players but let's just throw that aside a person who's brand new to warhammer 40k does not have a very high probability of raffle stomping someone who has been playing for 15 years. If nothing else, the new player doesn't have the model count. They don't have the understanding of the rules and the factions and the way that different powers 
flow together in combinations or the ways that other stuff stops things okay um that is a very 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 big thing but a lot of people have this idea this old um this old movie line of now the teacher has become the student <laughs> no, no, no 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 that that's that might be a thing that we want to happen i'm not gonna lie it, it might be a thing but those lines tend to happen 10, 12, 20 years after the student's initiation by the teacher, okay? I might be able to beat my Sifu in a fight 20 years from now, but it's not happening on my third day of class, y'all, <laughs> okay? Um, but with that said, um, you know, this is... Now, that mindset tends to be held mainly by competitive folks. Um, and, of course, the third manifestation is quit. Just quit discouragement. I'm not going to get this. It's too hard. I don't see myself winning. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes through that. And that tends to be the mindset that I come across more nowadays. Um, it's too hard. It's complicated. There's a lot to take in. And as a teacher, I personally, and this is anecdotal, I personally like to set up um, an area, um, a safe space, if you will, to let the student know, to let the person I'm teaching know, dude, it's not about winning. I wanna make sure that you understand this whole thing. When I teach tabletop miniature games, for example, I don't bring whole teams out. You know, I tend to try and teach game mechanics, you know, I teach how the dice work, how the movement works, how the phases of each turn works. Um, and then I like to sit down with them and, you know, talk with them about the game. You know, see what combinations they can think of, see what stuff they like, especially since I play a lot of things that have IPs. You know, um, when I play things like Hero Clicks or Crisis Protocol, those are based on comic book characters. So, when I sit down and I teach like 30 year old women how to play the game, they tend to focus on wanting to play the female characters, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, um, um, Black Widow, Marvel Girl, um, you know, all of the female characters, which is awesome. Of course, a lot of people want to self insert and that's a thing. Um, just like I tend to like playing green guys because there aren't enough black toys. Um, and when they get out there, one, as a teacher, it is my responsibility to not come at them with everything I got. A lot of people think, you know, oh, well, if I'm playing a, a game where there's going to be a winner, I want to make sure that that person didn't let me win. Sorry, if I play a game and I'm trying to teach you how the mechanics go, I am going to focus on teaching you how, to, how the mechanics work so that when you win, it's a victory that you created, that you earned, okay? But I'm not going out there teaching you one or two rules and then pulling out all the stops because there's learning the rules and in order to be a good player at any game, including the game of life, it's about knowing when to circumvent certain aspects of rules. Not breaking, not breaking the rules but understanding where the rules do and don't apply, okay? Um, that's a big thing, you know? Again, um, you know, you see this all the time in law. Y'all might see this at work, you know? It's under no circumstances are you to use the red bucket. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll find the orange bucket, I'll put it next to the red bucket, and there we go. Now, if the orange bucket happens to, you know, you see what I mean? But a lot of, a lot of people are so focused on being clever before they understand the rules that they tend to get discouraged or angry and stuff like that. And that's, that's not what we want. That's not what we want as gamers. That's not what we want as good times. So, um... I, I have an ex-girlfriend that I taught Magic the Gathering to, and she was so bent on beating me that she would try and put cards in the play without reading the entire text, okay? 
because winning was more important to her than learning all right and i've played games with people that would that would very much be like oh well, you understand this so now i'm pulling out all the stops and i'm like playing it against you isn't fun because i'm losing and i don't know why and seriously speaking and impossible can back me up on this i've done this you know i've taught in that manner and um there's a big thing about that because um the places that we learn from and the environments that we in that we're in have a deeper effect on us than we thought okay a lot of competitive people that i know are that way because they learn games from jerks it's it's just one of those things and we all have our different measurements of where being a jerk starts okay um but one of my closest friends who i don't game with is always looking to screw over the players in his campaign which is actually fine because he runs games of political intrigue and a lot of spy games and politics and things like that so when you're going in there you're walking into a game of thrones type environment i don't like those environments so i don't play there but the people that i play with that have played with this guy for a long time they suffer a little bit of trauma from that and they take that mindset into every single game they go through it's like pulling teeth to try and get some of my friends into one of my games where i'm just like no no no, that's good let's keep going because i'm more of a narrative fun and playing gm than i am of a you need to be clever in order su to survive gm so i don't run call of cthulhu okay um yeah it's it's really one of those things i'm i'm about like 1950s adventure and stuff like that um but um i was teaching someone how to play war machine and i was playing the way that i learn and this is a really big really big important thing um really big important thing is however you learn how to play something you know whatever you learn it's very easy to believe that that is the universal applicator okay um it's really easy to think i learned it this way therefore this is how it's done across the entire world this is this is this is how i learned therefore this is how it's done period and that's a dangerous mindset because things change from store to store job to job person to person to person to person to person i mean that's that's the life that we live guys um so understanding these types of players okay um and when i say understanding the type of players um competitive socially motivated um game motivated and of course um the ones that are just happy to play if you understand not just the type of player you're trying to teach but the type of player that you are then you can understand what's important to you what's important to them and which games to choose now i talked a little bit about learning curve okay and learning curve is big Ooh, i'm losing i'm losing viewers this is hurtful um learning curve is a huge thing because um role-playing games tend to have a very hot medium to high learning curve there's a lot to learn especially when you're new i mean in order to play a role-playing game you've got to read a textbook i mean how does that work right and most not all most role-playing games are reference books with pretty pictures okay um the rest of them are reference books with ugly pictures but i don't know much about art um <laughs> tabletop um tabletop miniatures games regardless of what they advertise to you tend to have high learning curves um a lot of moving pieces a lot of combinations and the newer the game the better because the newer the game the smaller the community and the smaller the community the fewer changes the company will have made for um for i guess you can say bugs that have turned into features because everyone has a patch day not just not just video games but patching is something that happens when stuff that 10,000 people can discover where your quality assessment team of five 
couldn't. I mean, there's there's only so much game testing that can happen. But once you throw it out there for thousands of people to do over a long period of time, they'll find mistakes that you didn't know were there. So you've got to correct those and then recorrect. And, you know, one of the things I say all the time is that there's no correction like an overcorrection, right? Um, and as I was saying, with all of that comes a very high learning curve. Um, teaching hero clicks is not easy. Teaching Warhammer 40k, not easy. You literally have no, no, um, no exaggeration, lore and game mechanics that if you printed them out on double-sided paper would add up to a book this thick, this thick, all right? Um, now party games tend to have a very, very low learning curve, very low learning curve, okay? Very, 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 very low learning curve. Um, because again, they're marketed toward people that probably have never played to play it before. Aren't really, when I say tabletop gamers, I mean, this being our main hobby. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and of course, um, you know, they're made for people who are going to be inebriated. Um, let's see over here in the chat, we got. Attila saying he'd rather teach 40k via roleplay before getting into miniatures. Um, that is a thing. That is a thing. Um, one of the things I love doing is teaching roleplay throughout any game media, especially since Dungeons and Dragons started as a way to make the game chainmail more three dimensional, as it were. <clears throat> um, but then when I play my miniatures games with Star Superheroes, I'm always doing voices. <laughs> yes, I will use the. I'll use the Carol Danvers special. Everyone, follow me. I'm Captain America. Hi, I'm I'm Tony Stark, and well, uh, old comic fans know that I'm. I was gonna buy a cinnamon bun franchise, but too drunk. Too too cinnamon buns on the arc reactor. Arc uh, arc Biden. Arc cinnamon reactor. <laughs> you know that's uh one of those things. Tony Stark is a drunk, guys. Um, and board games range they, they span um there are so many types with so many different learning curves i prefer for board games they're in the medium learning curve range things like settlers of Catan or power grid or um splendor is one of my favorite games um because um i deal with a lot of new people now when i deal with my hardcore this is my only hobby game friends i'll pull out game of thrones you know i'll pull out um I'll pull out Cosmic Risk or Risk God War, you know, but those games ain't easy. Those games are not easy. They're not easy to learn. Um, if someone has only played a game of Monopoly before, you don't want to pull out Pandemic. That That's, or heaven forbid, any of the Call of Cthulhu or Eldritch games, that'll make them hate you. You know, diplomacy is bad enough. <laughs> um, so yeah, and all of these games have different um, levels and if you guys are millennials y'all tell me especially down there in the comments and hit up the youtube channel when i post up this part of the thing on youtube y'all tell me how have your experiences been trying to teach people Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon or magic the gathering hmm? you know some people get it some people don't but hopefully in avoiding the pitfalls of trying to teach people how to win and then you know countering everything that you taught them you know um and again, this is both from the teacher perspective and the student perspective. Um, how do these things apply to you guys? Now, I'm normally on for an hour, but I really want to feature something else. But yeah, um, we're kind of run running out of time. But I'm going to be doing something a little a little different um, in, the, in at least a week to come. As you guys know, I um I work with uh, Nerd Soul Productions, uh, Michael Young over there. Big shout out, big friend, big shout out. And um, this dude, this dude, um, is great. He is just great. And this guy is prolific, man. Um, and one of um one of the things that he and I are going to be talking about sometime soon is a company called Black Sands Entertainment. Okay, um. And what they got, and I'm going to mute this whole thing as not to do the thing, but these these brothers, these guys are great. They're independent comic creators, and they have a lot of stuff. They just released a DVD 
which is great. And um, on their DVD is animated stuff. They were having a hard time, a hard time getting backing and stuff like that. But I want to show you guys at least a trailer. Just head up to um, Black Sands Entertainment and um, pick up their DVD. Subscribe to their YouTube thing because these brothers are fire. Um, they're doing these, they're picking up the thing, or joining Milestone Comics and independent created stuff really, really dedicated to people of color and self-insertion. And we're going to get on their story because they were told by the entertainment industry that their market is too small and having a mostly black cast in a comic book Focusing on the royalty and mythology of Egypt was not historically accurate, nor was it culturally relevant. <laughs> um, I'm doing another panel on this, y'all. So let's uh, let's head over to these guys real quick. Let me just make sure my music is under control because I know how you guys feel about that. And I'm working on it. But um, again, the fact that we got an ace on our Patreon now, um, that being a $100 donor, um, massive shout outs to Jennifer um, that's helping eventually when we make enough money I'll be able to hire other people to you know run this the switcher and the sound and all that stuff until then our doors are barely open but let's take a look at uh, Black Sands DVD trailer and um, I want to talk to you guys about it we'll do like 10 minutes on this all right yeah, let's take a look I hope I get when I'm older. World gold across my chest and keep a chip on my shoulder. I'm overpowered by the thoughts of the type of leader. I'm meant to be mentally scarred from days my grandfather had almost finished me. Flashbacks, and when I think I erased it, I get a vision back when I was getting beat in the basement. Passed down three generations, the seed of an ancient pharaoh. I gotta prepare for me to be the replacement. My grandfather Rock said to be the gas to the spark. As far as the problem ended before it starts, only the weak act last. So think later and act fast. Slash back at anybody that give you backlash. And at last, be at one with the fist. Don't believe in magic. You should be the one with the tricks. Up under your sleeve. Bringing anyone to their knees. Don't be the ruler that they want. Be the one that they need. Should I be yeah. understanding? Should I be understanding? Or was that considered serious? Was that considered all about these guys right now. They're, they, they do some good stuff. Um... And um, yeah, I want to boost their signal. Yeah, right? It looks tight as I don't know what. Um, so yeah, um, pop up their DVDs. They've got three or four different comics. And you can find Black Sands Entertainment. Um, you know, you can find their YouTube channel, Bazoom, Bazinga. Um, you can also find um, <clears throat> you can also find them at, Black, at BlackSandsEntertainment.com, um, as usual. And... Um, yeah, I mean, this is some of the stuff that you can see and find and all that stuff. And again, um, yeah, check them out. Um, one of the things, um, one of their big properties is called um, The Seven Kingdoms. Um, and another one, I believe, was Sons of... Um, Sons of Think. They've got four major properties out right now. Uh, the Morris Family... Um, which is a very fun little adventure and kids to kings and kids to kings let's check out a quick sneak preview of that um it literally is um young pharaoh and his boys on an adventure So yeah, and yeah, and of course they start with motion comics and things like that. And um, yeah, so check out their stuff. It is tighter than the Alexandrian knot, and I don't say that about very many people. Um, and again, these guys, they're angry at Hollywood right now, and I can't say that I blame them because um, the regular entertainment industry 
is a weird and funny place. Um, hey, yeah, what's going on? What's going on for talking? Yeah, that's right. This, yeah, I am the guy from the guild house last Sunday. Thank you. Um, I believe you're the guy I gave the D6 dice to. So thank you for showing up, but you're coming at the, at the last minute because we're about to get out of here. Um, I hate to say it. I hate to be that guy, but we've already been on for over an hour and I actually have an appointment <laughs> in not too long. So with that though, I gotta say thank you guys for showing up today. Uh, major shouts out, uh, shout outs to um, again, the people over at, um, people over at boop, 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 Black Sands Entertainment. Like I said, we're going to be talking a little more about them in the weeks to come. Um, I'm doing another panel discussion on those guys specifically because I like roundtable stuff. And, um, oh, okay, yeah. And, um, a few other announcements. I'm putting together, um, yeah, I am totally putting together, and you guys are going to like this, a Discord channel. I know, I know, I know, it's going to be a thing, I know it's a thing, um, but we need to put together a Discord channel, um, and as soon as I find the right moderators and all that stuff, then um, this is going to be a Patreon primary Discord server. Um, of course, we're gonna have, or we're gonna have Patreon primary um, channels um, in our Discord, so that we can run games um, not more regularly, as you, as it were, but um, just enough for us to um, um, have have a few more games. Um, and more regularly because that's where most people are doing the discord thing. I like having games online for you people through the zoom app um, Because I like video chat and all that jazz um, So we're gonna be doing that and um, I'm gonna be working on getting some more stuff going Excuse me um, through um, The other platforms because it is well, how can I put this? Um, I'm in a weird space when it comes to, um, when it comes to this channel and we've got a lot of stuff that we want to do, a lot of stuff that we plan on doing, a lot of stuff that are, that's coming down the aisle. Um, I'm doing as much as I can individually and, um, you know, if you guys know me personally, you'll know my girlfriend is not very happy with me most days because, of course, I'm hardly home. Um, I'm hardly home. I'm hardly, you know, it, it's one of those I'm always working type things. And she's like, yeah, uh, that thing is your girlfriend. Those places are your girlfriend. And I'm like, come on, honey, we're building something big. And then she comes back to reality because, you know. Um, emotions are real and emotions are high, but, um, we're making progress and, um, we're putting the final touches on the merch store. I'm going to be getting rid of some equipment pretty soon. We got hit with some major bills and the car kind of exploded on Christmas. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, so looking at all that stuff, I'm going to say, um, we've got some stuff coming down, working on, um, putting together the discord server. I'm learning Discord. I didn't know how many years it was, and I know that there's going to be trolls and stuff. So I'm asking you guys, you deckers and jacks and aces and kings and queens, um, to help me out. When people come up and um, start trying to troll stuff, don't engage. Just dogpile them and tell them to either be quiet or go to a different channel with that stuff because we're here to promote a better gaming environment. We're trying to be inclusive to everyone except for those who would exclude people, okay? No gatekeepers, um, no Nazis, <laughs> you know, recovering Nazis will deal, you know? Um, but seriously, it, it is really a matter of, I'm glad that people are here, I'm glad that people are following, um, 
and you know major shouts out to metropolis um we're going to be doing a massive crossover in uh, on valentine's day but with all that i'm running late for an appointment so oh my god look at that i'm being played off as though i'm on the oscars but for those of you guys that are just showing up thank you for your support um drop us a follow subscribe if you can if you've got like a free subscription laying around from your amazon prime account that would be awesome it helps us out but if you guys are just now getting here and you want to join the discussion and all that stuff i'm sorry we are pretty much out of here um but you can always send us an email over at back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com follow us over on youtube subscribe to us there um and oh there we go yeah subscribe to us over on youtube um and follow our social media that is our twitter our instagram our facebook on deckers on the book um so that you guys get announcements as of monday as of monday we are going to be broadcasting four to five days a week again because that is how we are going to be rolling we're getting all that stuff out i finally got my staff stuff figured out and done some major improvements to the studio so that is what we are going to be doing for um the next up so we're going to be on um i will have a i will have an official announcement i'll be doing the thing on instagram and youtube and um twitter and all that stuff to let you guys know when we're going to be back but we're back on twitch and we are going to be doing this for at least eight hours a week y'all um and i say starting next week because that's when buster recap comes back and we'll be talking about lost in space season two and a couple of other things um but yeah so with that i'm gonna say thank you guys for showing up super thanks to the people over in MP City. You know, I love y'all. I love y'all hard. I love y'all like I love barbecue ribs. And um, I gotta say thank you guys for joining me on the dark side of the room. But remember, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, disability, or your budget, you just tell them that we said to take them cards and put them back in the deck. All right, I will talk to you guys soon. And remember, um, if you guys really want, um, you know, we would really appreciate this. If you were to help us out and head over to the Patreon at patreon.com slash back in the deck or slash BID underscore P and throw us a buck a month. You have no idea how far that goes. And we've got new perks that we've been putting up on the Instagram, including keychains and little miniatures of your favorite street mage, or as you guys know, the cinematic sorcerer. So again, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstance of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, or your but your, your budget or your disability, you just tell them that we said to take them cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, saying thank you guys for joining me, and we will see you next time on the dark side of the room. <laughs>